<laughs> scarf. <laughs> I mean, you know, Mike, Mike stands are hard enough to work. You gotta mess it up with a scarf. Oh, yeah, privilege. <laughs> oh, really? I'm getting booze already. Okay. So, um, uh, as a uh, as a kid, we spent uh, summers uh, in a bungalow colony in uh, the country. It was called Wurtsboro Gardens. It's a couple dozen cabins on a few uh, acres of fields and woods and the Catskills. It's down the road from a uh, village which had a bake shop and an ice cream store called Custer's Last Stand. Now, I wasn't great in history, but I'm pretty sure that didn't happen in the Catskills, but uh, my cousins were there, it was idyllic, and um, of course, it's not the country without a lunatic with a hook for a hand, and ours was called Cropsy, which is apparently pretty common, but I didn't know it at the time. This is the guy who would uh, terrorize teenagers making out in cars by scratching up their cars and doing unspeakable things to them with a hook. I mean, storybook summers, people, this is what we're talking about. And um, our mothers were mostly housewives and school teachers, so they spent the whole summers up there with us. And our dads would come up on the weekends, and during the week, our moms would ship us off to the day camp on the bungalow colony so they could play mahjong and drink gin and tonic. So um, the counselors kept us busy with um, softball, tennis, arts and crafts, walks through the woods, uh, country roads, and down by this creek where, the, you know, decades earlier, this tree had been hit by lightning, and they called that Cropsy's grave. Lightning had struck the tree and then hit the hook and reanimated this guy, and then he started doing his things with teenagers. Um, Excuse me. Um, but the summer that I turned nine, um, earlier that year, lightning had struck a smaller tree about 20 feet down the creek bed from Cropsy's grave. And they said, oh, that's Cropsy's son. Now, I, Cropsy's son didn't have a hook for a hand. It wasn't a genetic disorder. But um, <laughs> Cropsy and Cropsy's son, the story now went, they would lurk in the tops of trees waiting to pounce on, you know, hikers walking underneath. And that kind of freaked me out because I like to walk alone in the woods, but you know, these stories aren't real, right? Um, so later in the summer, the counselors took us for a walk down one of those country roads and took us off the woods, off the road into the woods for a hike. But before we got five feet, one of the counselors said, Everybody free, shut up, shut up, shut up. And so he's, he's listening and he's looking and he goes, Look, up there, there's a guy in that tree, and a guy in that tree. And sure enough, there was a guy up in that tree, and a guy up in that tree, and they're climbing down. And he's like, oh my god, it's Cropsy and Cropsy's son, run, run. So he gets us out to the road, and we're like running down the road back to the bungalow colony, like these like eight-year-old, nine-year-old boys, all elbows and knees, just pelting down the road. Run, run, it's Cropsy and Cropsy's son. And I don't want to freak you out, nobody died and Cropsy and Cropsy's son claimed no victims that day, well, except for me, because that really freaked me out and I could not go back into the woods. Until uh, a couple of years later, um, I was at some kid's bar mitzvah and I was talking to his cousin and she was telling me about this camp that she goes to that has a maniac called Cropsy. I'm like, well, no, you can't have a Cropsy in Illinois because we got one in New York. No, wait, there can't be two Cropsies, which means if there's not two Cropsies, there's no Cropsies, which means there's no Cropsy son, which means those guys set us up. I can't believe those freaking counselors. And it was, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saying all this to this girl and she's looking at me like, what is he going on about? But it was it was really profound for me because it was the first time that I learned that um, people in authority will lie to you just because they can, you know, just for fun. So uh, thanks a lot, countercultural 70s teens. You did your job. <laughs>